Now Stop. look what they're doing. Oh my goodness. They're purposefully trying to get COVID because they know they're going to get let go. It's nuts. Check out this story. California sheriffs, sheriff says inmates tried to infect themselves with coronavirus. <sighs> Two groups of inmates, inmates at a Los Angeles County jail. This is a different story, right? No, no, this is LA. Okay, I think this is LA, right? Same story? I think so. They tried to infect themselves by sharing water in a mask. Okay. And within two weeks, 30 prisoners tested positive. Oh my Sheriff goodness. Alex Villanueva at a briefing showed surveillance videos from two dormitory units at the North County Correctional Facility in Castaic. Yeah, okay, it's the same place. The footage captured inmates in one unit sharing a container of hot water and others in a second unit sniffing a mask. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so gross. Let me sniff that mask, Amen. bro. Hey, man, you got mask? I got mask. <laughs> COVID positive. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'd like to go home. Oh Look gosh. it up. Let me sniff that mask. Yeah, oh my, my goodness. The footage captures inmates in one unit sharing a container. Oh, we read that. The sheriff said the inmates used hot water to try to raise their temperatures just before a nurse checked them. An elevated temperature is a symptom for coronavirus. Villanueva said the inmates mistakenly believed that if they were infected, they would be freed. It's dismaying and it's disheartening. None of the 30 inmates required critical care when they were sick, though some had moderate symptoms, said Bruce Chase, the department's assistant sheriff of custody operations. No prisoners within the county's jail system, the largest in the country, have died from the virus. Jails and prisons nationwide have become flashpoints. More than 25,000 inmates have been infected and about 350 have died nationwide. From Rikers Island in New York to federal, state, and local lockups, lockups coast to coast, according to an unofficial tally kept by the COVID-19 Behind Bars Data Project run by UCLA Law. In California, five inmates in a state prison in San Bernardino have died from COVID complications and outbreaks. So we got this. They say in, in LA County, in mid-April, the North County Correctional Facility didn't have a single case. Days later, nine inmates were flagged as being potentially sick. I don't know if California has actually uh, ended up releasing anybody. So We'll, I'll, I'll wrap this one up. They say for for most people, the coronavirus cases are mild or moderate. We know this fever, cough, yada, yada. For some, it's all there. Okay, we get it. So the inmates think they're going to get released. Yeah, we're because they, this is California. They're not letting you go. Yeah, not in California. It's I not guess. Texas or New York, right? Well, why would Didn't Texas let, let people go? Yeah, right. I don't know. Yeah, that doesn't make You'd think sense. Texas is the place where they're like, son, you got COVID, so we're giving you the chair. <laughs> the last, the last, yeah. Just line <laughs> yes. them up. Wasn't Pull the lever. <laughs> yeah. Crank them in, crank them out. Oh, do, they, do they still hang Everybody people? hold hands. Oh, do they still gosh. hang people in Texas? Maybe in Texas. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't think now. so. What? No. What's it, the, what, they, they don't but they definitely people. have the death penalty there. They, uh, yeah, Texas? Yeah. yeah they sure. haven't hung people for years. I thought like, there was a state that just got rid of it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that there was a state that still hanged people. What? No. I swear. Can you look it up? I'm looking it up right now. I was kidding about Texas. We love Texas. <laughs> but Texas, you'd think, would be substantially more brutal in terms of, like, uh, uh, keeping people locked up, not yeah. letting them go, and then arresting a salon owner. That's nuts. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. But it gets better. It gets better. Well, I we got to set examples for those those salon owners that <laughs> think they right. can open yeah, up. How dare they? <laughs> we got to we gotta owners. set that example, yeah. man. Or you also had in Texas, I mean, you do have some hardcore <laughs> people, those, those dudes showing up with the you know, with uh, with rifles yeah. at the bar, big what is it, Big Daddy oh, Zanes right, or whatever? Right, Big Daddy Zanes, right. And then the mm -hmm. and then the, the police end out that big uh bear cat or whatever it's called. Uh -huh. Things are getting spicy, man. This is nuts. What are they doing? Check out this story though. Yeah. Prisoner released from facilities to limit COVID nineteen spread, arrested again for crimes. Now this is uh, Everett Washington. Oh my goodness. They say uh Kami Borg is a business owner in Everett and she knew this was inevitable. It puts everybody at risk. He could have broken into our store. Instead, police say Matthew Cruson raged on a Thai restaurant across the street on Broadway, amped up on methamphetamines, using a crowbar to smash the wooden boards. I'm sure glad they released this man oh, from me jail. Too. What's let me, let me ask you something. Listen, we, we do have an ethical conundrum here. What are the moral constraints of a society when it comes to locking someone up where they could potentially be infected with a deadly disease? Mm. Like, is that is that ethical? Is that moral? Is that constitutional? It might border on cruel and unusual punishment. Yeah. Telling someone straight up, I know that you mugged that old woman and you're getting a year in jail. Also, there's a viral contagion with a, you know, moderate mortality rate, according to recent estimates that could mess you up. Do we as a society have a right to put someone in that position? That's a tough question, man. I don't know. That's why I, I, I understand, toward, uh, understand and lean towards like letting people out. Mm -hmm. But they got to do better vetting. Yeah. Like this guy, what's the first thing he does? He takes a bunch of meth and then goes and smashes windows oh, with a man. crowbar or something. Like, but we, we, how many, how many times have we read stories like this? Mm -hmm. 
This is like what the fourth or fifth. Yeah. All I can think of is the the birdshot, buckshot, birdshot, buckshot. <laughs> oh, Dave Chappelle. Yeah. Dave Chappelle. <laughs> he's on great... meth. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> he gets up. It's he's unfazed. That was awesome. That was awesome. Yeah. But think about what's like all this that's happening, and now it's like okay, we're gonna arrest Elon. We're gonna release criminals. We're mm-hmm. gonna let everybody go. I think this is a major catalyst for the uh, the boogaloo, man. I think so too. The boogaloo. It's funny. Vice wrote about the uh, the Boogaloo Boys, the Boogaloo the, Boys, the, the Boogaloo Movement. <laughs> it's like, calm down, Vice. You're looking for everything everywhere. I do think we're dangerously close to a civil war. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what that means, right? I could just be a little excited. I've been saying this for a while now. A little, but I, but I haven't been wrong. A little fear mongering. No. Nah. No. I, no. 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 That's no. so unlike you. Fear mongering would be me lying and trying to claim oh, oh, something. Okay. So that I could drum up clicks or something. Okay. Me telling you my legit opinion on what's been going on over the past several years and where are we at today? Okay. That's not fear mongering. Sure. All right. Some people will say it is for sure. Criticize me, but I'm being completely legit when I'm asking these questions. Yeah. Because listen, a bunch of dudes showed up to a grocery store. They're wearing masks. They have body armor. They have rifles. Totally legal. Mm-hmm. Totally legal. Now you had a bunch of people show up to this bar that was defying the governor's orders. The governor's orders, and then a bear cat comes out. Technically, still totally legal. Right. Because they weren't inside the store, right? But it's, not, it's not even that. The governor doesn't have the right to decree that you can't, right. you know, uh, run, do these things. It's like, now, now when it comes to business licenses, there's an argument there. But we're still getting dangerously close. Then you look at prisons letting people out. Judges telling them, you have to apologize to me. Yes, apologize ridiculous. now or else. And she was like, no. But I'm not even. I applaud that woman, yeah, by the way. Right. Seriously. Man. Liberty. Seriously, when I heard her so. say that, I was like, oh, yes. But here's, so girl. here's the important mm. bit is that the Supreme Court of it's Texas dope. overturned it, meaning we were always on the side of the law when we said she should not submit and apologize. Right. And the Supreme Court overruled the lower court. So we and everybody who said this woman was doing the right thing was correct. Yep. The scary thing is you can get banned from social media because, you know, they don't care. Yep. It's they like, don't oh, care. You can't, you can't say these things. But I'll tell you what right now, we're not, we, we won't get super political, but I got, I'm oh, going to, I'm, I'm going I'm to throw it Obamagate <laughs> into the mix on this one. Oh okay. man, Obamagate. Obamagate. And then we'll come, you heard him say but we'll, we'll bring it back to the on the ground stuff and the boogaloo stuff. Listen, man, right now you've got Donald Trump tweeting at Obamagate, mm-hmm. the implication that Obama directed or was involved in false charges brought against Trump and his administration to sabotage his administration as yep. he, as he was coming into, uh, into power. It seems like it. But it's beyond that. It's, there, there's a lot of insinuations about. You know, was the previous administration involved in trying to sabotage the campaign of Trump Mm -hmm. to help Hillary win? Beyond that, why did we go through years of this conspiracy theory stuff? Yeah. So we don't need to get too much into that because, um, you know, I want to keep it to the on the ground stuff. But this is where it brings us today. You've got right now documents being released from, you know, the attorney general and, you know, classified documents. And conservatives are pretty much on board with... It looks like there's something dirty here from the Obama administration, for yeah. sure. At the very least, Obama knew, and we don't know how he knew this stuff was going on. And it was, it's like, it's crazy. The FBI went after Michael Flynn's kid. They had no justification for investigating him in the first place. They took one casual statement he made and claimed it was a lie to, during an investigation and used that to prosecute him. So all this is overturned. You have two factions right now. You have the left that believes Donald Trump is subverting the rule of law. Okay. And that he's 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 a mobster getting all his buddies off the hook for crimes they committed. Then you have another faction that believes the Obama administration and the FBI were falsely laying charges to sabotage Trump's administration. And now finally, Trump is on the counteroffensive weeding out the corrupt. It doesn't matter what you think is right. The fact is they exist. So what happens when Trump gets reelected or what happens when this goes when, when stuff like this starts happening? So to bring it back to the on the ground stuff you have in the debate about to, whether or not to reopen mm-hmm. or stay closed tribalism. The left doesn't care about the science. They don't care about the facts. They don't care about the studies. They don't care about the UN. They don't care about the starvation. They're saying, shut up and shut down, period. Yep. That's scary. It's true. So what? So it is. It's spreading people into two factions, like open up or not to open up. I think the objective, the objective reality is that we can see real wrongdoing on the part of these FBI agents. Yep, definitely. Obama knew. We'll see how far that goes. I'm not going to make... I know a lot of people who have done a lot of research in this will make more definitive claims about the Obama administration. But it stands to reason that right now the evidence shows the right is... It's like correct leans in their direction. Especially when you look at what's going on with the lockdown is where things get crazy. 
First of all, governors don't have the right to decree that you Agreed. can't protest. Ridiculous. Bill, Bill de Blasio has no right to decree you can't protest. Mm -hmm. so, so the left is already in the wrong on this one. Absolutely. UN says starvation is coming. We got to reopen. What does the left say? People want haircuts. <laughs> Just not true. That's not what people are protesting for. No. Some people for sure, but to highlight the one person out of the you know, hundreds of thousands. Yeah, it makes no we're sense. We're seeing surfers in California and Hawaii be like, no way, dude. Like w insane lies from people that the virus is vaporized in the ocean shore and it'll get you sick if you go near it. Like that's, that's nuts. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. But then they, co they come out and they argue that the right is anti-science and Elon Musk is anti-science. They arbitrarily say Elon Musk can't reopen. Wait, the right says that? The left. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the right. I was like, Did I say wait. the right? Yeah. I was like, what? The left is arguing yeah. that like, you, 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 know, you can't reopen or whatever. Yeah, it's stupid. So if you look at what's actually going on with the data, mm -hmm. the, we, have, we have four or five studies now saying the mortality rate is very, very, very low. And we, there, there are substantially more people who have had this. We've had local doctors come out, get their videos deleted from YouTube yep. for, for calling this out. Yep. The UN says if we don't reopen, 130 million will starve. I think at the very least we can say we get it. It's serious. Yeah. People are going to lose their lives. Right. More people are going to lose their lives because the economy is collapsing. Exactly. We've got to get things going again so people can get food and get. The, but they don't. They don't care. Yeah. People can go out, just wear masks, wash your hands, social distance. We can do this. People but, aren't idiots. We can. We can make it happen. People. Well, it, it reminds me of that Men in Black comment, right? What? A person is, what is smart. That? Okay. People are dumb, panicky, you yeah. know. Dangerous animals. Dangerous yeah. animals. Is that was the quote? Yeah, I love that quote. Yeah, it's a good quote. But an individual who doesn't want to get sick. Right. Right. If, if you want to go to Walmart, you see someone not wearing a mask, you avoid them. That's true. You walk away. You wear gloves. You sanitize your hands. Mm -hmm. Don't touch your face. There are ways you could protect yourself. But we also know the data has shown going outside is actually better. 66% of people who have gotten sick have, were staying home. I think this was in, in, in New York. Mm -hmm. Showing that the people who are going out consistently were less likely to get sick. So the lockdown may have failed. Something happened? Yeah, I don't know what that was. The, was lo ghost. the lockdown may have may have been substantially, uh, may have hurt us hmm. more so. So we have all yeah. this data. Now it's time to reassess. What do we get? Yep. Tribalism saying no. Mm -hmm. So I just think about what happens come November. Vegas odds have Trump to win. The polls had Biden to win, but they're dropping. This is crazy. It was a really funny tweet I saw where um, a bunch of Bernie supporters were laughing when okay. the polls came that Trump was now beating Biden in a bunch of key states. Yeah. So it's like, what happens when you have all of this, all of these people who arbitrarily want the lockdowns to continue, jokingly saying, fine, go and arrest Elon Musk, attacking Elon Musk, even though he's completely in the right. Yeah. And then Trump wins again. Do these people just say like, well, gosh darn it, we lost. <laughs> I guess we'll just carry on with our lives. I don't know. It feels like they're becoming an, a minority like i don't know anybody like that anymore and all my friends who used to like bernie don't really yeah follow bernie anymore they're becoming more i, w I say conservative but they're they're not conservative but they sure don't associate with democrats anymore the left side yeah and that's maybe, everybody i know I don't maybe know. maybe then what we're really seeing is like the last remnants of the democratic establishment collapsing see that makes more sense to me I, then, I don't I don't think it's going to be a boogaloo. It's going to be people are like, oh, wait, we all feel the same way. All right. All right. Good. Well, the, the few that have that thought they had a huge voice and a huge backing, they're like suddenly there's no one behind them and they're yeah. just standing by themselves. It's the Internet. You know, yes. But I think maybe one of the ways to look at it is the Trump defeated the Republican establishment. OK. Crushed them. They're gone. They've, they've either fallen in line with Trump or they've retired and they're gone. Oh, they did it to themselves more. What do you mean? The Democrats? No, the Republicans. Trump oh. defeated the Republican establishment. Oh, okay. Yeah, in 2015, 2016 when he mm. won. Right, right, right. He shut them out. And then you had the never Trump or Republicans go, oh, harumph, oh, no, we'll yeah. resist. And then they joined the Democrats. Yeah. But now you have that last vestige of the establishment collapsing. You've got the, the, the leftist populists mocking them and laughing as they wither. And, yeah, and the same thing from the right-wing populists. Yeah. Like the, the, the elite establishment is gone. That's true. So maybe, yeah, that's, that's, that's a good point now that I think about it. Maybe there won't be a boogaloo. Yep. Because what we're really seeing is the vocal, the, the last remnants of a vocal minority right. shrinking into, into nothingness. Yep, that's what I, that's what I see. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. For the, for the record, he agreed with me. 
yeah. That's kind of an interesting take. Everyone loves uh, calling out the other way. But see, there are some times we're in agreement. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there will be no boogaloo. I don't think there's going to be a boogaloo. Well, because yeah, Trump It wants is fun to say, though. A bo- boogaloo? Boogaloo. It's, it's from an 80s movie. How did it become the word for civil war? It sounds, so like, weird. sounds like a really cool cat's name. Yeah. Oh, that's oh. boogaloo. He's, He's cool. cool. He's cool. <laughs> that is right? a good name for a cat. Yeah, I like that. Mm-hmm. Boogaloo. Mm-hmm. Yep. Start calling You're welcome. That. 